The following is a New Year's Day message from Prime Minister, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. Fellow Grenadians, sisters and brothers all, a new year is upon us. First, let me say Happy New Year to all Grenadians, Caraconians and Pity Martinicans. Whether you are here at home or in the diaspora, I wish nothing but the best for each and every one of you. And as Prime Minister of this blessed nation of ours, I take this opportunity to reaffirm my commitment and that of my cabinet to do all we can to facilitate further levels of growth and development that brings benefit to all, particularly those who are most vulnerable. Sisters and brothers, like the dawn of every day, the start of a new year provides an opportunity to start afresh or to improve on what we already have been doing. 2018 has been an exceptionally good year on the economic front for us here in Grenada. The local economy continues to grow steadily. In fact, Grenada's economy is widely recognized as the fastest growing in the region, with average growth recorded at 5% annually since 2013. Increased economic activity, particularly in construction and tourism sectors in 2018, meant more jobs for more people. A further reduction in the unemployment rate and increase in family incomes. I am sure you would agree that we are indeed a, on a good wicket and we must sustain that. It is heartening to witness the hundreds of young people en route each working day to jobs in the construction sites hotels and hospitality centers, and scores of self-employed entrepreneurs engage in positive economic activity. Our country is indeed a buzz. Sisters and brothers, although important, economic growth is not the sole measure by which we determine the progress of our nation. Government is committed to widening the array of social programs through which we are able to make a difference in the lives of thousands of persons, both young and old. Our youth, hundreds more, are benefiting from the Mani program. And we also launch initiatives such as the Empower which is specifically targeted to make a difference in the lives of hundreds of our young men. For the elderly, we have increased the monthly seed payment, and we hope to increase this even further in the very near future. As we welcome the new year, it is with great anticipation for what's to come. Undoubtedly, there are many opportunities ahead. The construction sector grew by 40% in 2018 and in 2019, and that trend is expected to continue. And the 2019 budget, you would have heard about the many projects set to come and stream. While there are few significant public sector projects, there is an enormous number of private sector projects scheduled to get underway. That's in addition to the many which started in 2018. Here again, sisters and brothers, we can say we are on a good wicket and we must continue to bat 
wisely. This unparalleled level of economic investment by the private sector reveals a very high and increasing level of investor confidence in the local economy and its management, which augurs well for the future development of our country. Government by itself cannot foster sustainable development. It requires a solid partnership with the private sector and workers. Underpinning all of this is the indispensable need for industrial stability. The roles of government and private sector are separate but complementary, as together they provide a tried and tested formula for countries' advancement. Government creates the enabling environment, but the real growth must be propelled by activity in the private sector which can only strive in the context of industrial stability. By and large, in the private sector, there was industrial stability with many companies and trade unions signing collective agreements what were reached in an amicable manner. In 2019, we expect the atmosphere of partnership and cooperation to continue, leading to even greater economic activity. Sisters and brothers, we do not live in a perfect world. Even the most positive situation would always coexist with some challenges. With that said, in the most recent round of negotiations, talks between the Pension Engagement Committee and the unions and staff associations became deadlocked on the issue of prepayment of pensions which is commonly referred to as gratuity. To be clear, there was mutual agreement on the elements outlined in February 18, 2018. A memorandum of understanding signed between the Pension Engagement Committee and the unions and staff associations. That MOU effectively restored and established pensions for all eligible officers appointed from and including April 4th, 1983. My fellow Grenadians, government has met in full its obligation under the MOU and in accordance with the order of the High Court in the Humlin Amstron case, we have restored fully, including retroactive payments the pensions of some 56 workers who came into the public service between April 4th, 1983 and February 22nd, 1985. This amounted to a total of $7.7 .7 million for all 56 workers. We are now, therefore, at the point of pension reform and to facilitate that, we are in negotiation with the unions and staff associations. Government therefore stands resolutely committed to affording public service retirees a better quality of life. But we must balance that commitment with the responsibility to protect the interests of the wider population by ensuring decisions made do not negatively impact the prospects for future development of this beautiful land. We must be fiscally prudent in all our decisions. If we are not, we'll put at risk the very security of employment and pension payments of the same public officers we sought out to help. During the process of collective bargaining, parties may disagree but should not necessarily become antagonistic. Regrettably for our country, the recent negotiations deteriorated to the point of industrial action with workers withholding their labor. As a consequence, government as employer rightfully paid wages and salaries for work done. This is a well-established and accepted industrial relations practice worldwide, but it also speaks to a fundamental principle that is applicable to all spheres of life and to all occupations. 
It is contrary to moral principles for anyone to expect payment for work that has not been done. Sisters and brothers, the decision to withhold wages and salaries brought this administration and myself no joy and it was not made lightly, particularly in light of the timing of it, being so close to the Christmas festive season. I know many people feel aggrieved and I personally empathize with those affected. But I cannot, in good conscience, go against the fundamental moral principles that I hold dear to my heart. I consider myself a teacher first and foremost, and I feel a deep affinity for those in the profession. Therefore, I sincerely hope that there is no permanent animosity because of a moral decision I felt compelled to make. I affirm here that government is keen to bring a speedy and lasting resolution to the pension negotiations. I make a special appeal to the union leaders to recognize, as I've said in my budget presentation, that, and I quote, government must apply the principles of universal social conscience and social justice for all." Unquote. Dear citizens, Grenadians, Karakunian, and Peter Martinikins, all, any objective review of improvements in pay and benefits to public officers since 2013 will reveal the extensive payments made by government. I appeal to my trade union friends to work with us to achieve a realistic fair, affordable, and sustainable resolution to this pension issue. The workers and people of Grenada deserve this. Sisters and brothers, now that the festivity of Christmas season has passed, and as we look forward in anticipation of a new year, let us go forth together to build our nation, recognizing that whatever we do today, we live a lasting footprint on the future. 2019 has opened up the door to endless possibilities. Let us make our collective legacy one we can be proud of as a people. Once again, I extend my continued best wishes for a happy and prosperous new year. May God bless each and every one of you. And may he continue to hold our dear nation in his bosom and in his favor. Thank you. The proceeding was a New Year's Day message from Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell.